Good morning. Welcome again to the worship services emanating from the Southside Church of Christ here in Orlando, Florida. We're so glad, so elated, so thankful and happy you've carved time out of your busy, arduous schedule to be a participant in our Sunday morning worship services. We're glad you're here. Let's open like we always open, Southside and beyond. Let's state our mantra, our edict, our concept, our precept. Let's state our mission statement we're trying to live by. One, two, three. What you see is what you say. What you say is what you sow. What you sow is what you reap. What you reap is what you are. What you are is what you give. What you give is what you get, and what you get is what you deserve. Amen, amen, amen to God be the glory. Remind all of you out there, in our uh, social media uh, network land to continue to watch us every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Southside Facebook, 11 a.m. Southside YouTube channel, 11 a.m. on our Southside website, sscoc.org, or 11 a.m. on our Southside app. 
And we have a duplication of services. Remember, you can watch the broadcast over and over and over again. That even helps our numbers. So uh, we'll be glad if you do that. And then join us on Wednesday nights on those same venues at 7 p.m. as we study spiritual wellness together. Uh, this week we'll be studying How Well Do You Love? On Wednesday night, 7 p.m., be there. Uh, beloved, I want to thank all of you for who joined us on our Southside Zoom congregational meeting last Sunday after worship. We had a great number of participants. Uh, great information was disseminated. And uh, we had great inquiries and questions. Uh, the spirit, the attitude of the members is par excellence. Your giving has been exemplary. Uh, it's hard to find something wrong. There's always nothing wrong with God, but you have been just a model church throughout this quarantine, this crisis, and we're forever thankful for joining us on our Southside Congregational Meeting. We will do those periodically. We will give you information on when they're coming up and how you can log on. We're going to remind you that the first Sunday of every month, we have what we call the Southside Prayer Call. And that will be the first Sunday at 12.30 p.m. after worship. Uh, we'll have a information where you can log in. We did it last month. It was an enormous success. Uh, you can log in, uh, register your prayer concerns, or just listen and pray with us and the elders as they pray for the members and all of their concentric concerns. Thank you again, Southside. Birthdays for the middle of the month. The way we do this is we do the first part of, of a month. Then when we get to the middle of the month, we do the middle to the end. And then at the latter part, we do those at the end of the month. Adrian Skinner, kinfolk, birthday last week. Happy birthday. Pumpkin Gibson, another favorite member. I, August may be my top month with favorite members. Teresa Parks, happy birthday. Daryl Hernandez Jr., happy birthday. Sheila Peterson, happy birthday. Brandon Johnson, young Brandon, happy birthday. Natasha Washington had a birthday. Ronald Bratcher, happy birthday. Jefferson Danzig. Look at all these power pack good members. Happy birthday. Aaron's and Moses, young college young man. Happy birthday. Michaela Dozier, graduated fam, you already. Happy birthday. Uh, Kamari Felton, my little, uh, I'm the God pastor for her. Happy birthday, sweetheart. Caleb Leith, happy birthday, young man. Annette Mitchell, favorite member. Happy birthday. April May. Great young lady. Happy birthday. Lauren Richardson. Oh, one of the dynamic duo of Layla and Lauren. Happy birthday, Lauren. Oh, now we're getting to the creme of the creme. Glendora Skinner. G Ma. Birthday's coming up. What a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. Beloved, I want you to pray particularly for those who are sick, those who've been affected directly, indirectly by COVID 19 and beyond. Uh, please pray for a dear friend, Sister in Christ, who worships in Bad Austin, Georgia, Sister Linda White, a member of the Southside Church there in Bad Austin, uh, a relative of Sister Trey, uh, but I've known this family for years, and she's suffering with some maladies, physical maladies. Please lift her in your prayers, as many as, as, as also with our members, uh, Sister Michelle Fiatra, Sister... Uh, Nikki McMillan and many others who are just going through the going through. Uh, pray with them, for them, concerning their medical maladies. And we know, we know that God is attentive and will hear and answer our prayers. Beloved, let us launch into our sermonic thrust this morning. If you would be so beneficently kind, Join me in the gospel according to Matthew, the 17th chapter. Our rendezvous point will be verse number 19. Matthew 17, and the verse is 19. I want to talk to you today about mountain-moving faith. Put a tag on it, Brother Leonard, mounting-moving faith. Matthew 17, verse 19. Then came the disciples to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast him out? Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, 
For verily I say unto you, if you have the faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove, and hence a move over yonder, and it shall move. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Jesus said, however, this kind goeth not without prayer and fasting. Our sermonic soliloquy is taken from the 20th verse. Jesus said, if you just had the faith of a grain of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and that mountain shall be moved. I want to talk to you again about mountain moving faith. Beloved, we read from the majestic pen of Matthew, the son of Alphaeus, duplicitically known as Levi in the scriptures. He records in this synoptic gospel, he records uh, a biographical account of the life of Jesus. You know him, the savior of the world, Jesus, our redeemer, Jesus, our adorable one. Jesus, uh, the Christ of Calvary. Jesus, the one who gave his life a ransom for the souls of humanity. Matthew finds Jesus in this text, beloved, in the midst and throes of his earthly ministry. Matthew now is an eyewitness of many of the miracles and many of the events that surrounded the life of Jesus over 2,000 years ago. That's the benefit of being a disciple, a pupil, a learner of Christ. You get to see his work firsthand. Southside and beyond the setting in the text is clear. Chapter 17 of Matthew's Gospels opens with a famous encounter when Jesus took Peter, James, and John to the zenith and the apex of a mountain. And there, while there, miraculously uh, appeared Moses and Elijah. The record is clear. Read it in the personal privacy of your praying ground. In Matthew 17, Peter got excited. Peter said to Jesus, it's good for us to be here. Let us then build three tabernacles, one for you, Jesus, one for Moses, and one for <coughs> Elijah. The Bible says God who is usually polite. The Bible says God, while he yet spake, he interrupted Peter. And God says, take your eyes off of Moses. Take your eyes off of Elijah. God directed Peter and subsequently us. He said, God said, focus and put your emphasis on Jesus. How do you know that, Brother Leonard? For he said in verse number eight, he says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. Well, beloved, after this famous encounter, Jesus, Peter, James, and John go back to the base of the mountain. They join the other nine disciples and continue his earthly ministry. And now comes the multitude of uh, the masses come unto Jesus. And here comes a man with an epileptic son, a man who the Bible says was a lunatic, a man who the Bible says was a demoniac. And the man had enough sense with his son possessing demons, son foaming at the mouth, son jumping in and out of water. You know, let, let me contemporize it, for son smoking marijuana, son drinking like a fish, Son or daughter in and out of jail. Son or daughter in and out of trouble. Son or daughter in and out of church. Son or, da son or daughter in and out of family relationship. That man had enough sense to get his son to Jesus. And south side and beyond, we ought to know, and the scripture reminds us, when you got a problem, whatever it is, get them or it to Jesus. 
Get your problem to Jesus. Get your concerns to Jesus. Get your issues to Jesus. Get your dilemmas to Jesus. Bring your situations, your circumstances to Jesus. Yes, bring your son or daughter to Jesus. Bring your husband or wife to Jesus. Bring your brother or sister to Jesus. Bring your grandchildren and great-grandchildren to Jesus. For once they all oh, your problems get exposed to Jesus. He can make all the difference in their lives. Well, beloved, in our text, after the man brought his son to Jesus, he explained to Jesus, I, I first took my son to your disciples, and they couldn't do anything with him. He left worse than when I got there. And now he comes to Jesus, and he says, uh, can you heal my son? Jesus cast out the demons and the devil. And after witnesses this, the disciples go privately to Jesus. Uh, they said, Master, why couldn't we cast out these demons? Why couldn't we cure this demoniac son? Why couldn't we perform an exorcist on the spirits that he possessed? Jesus said, because of your unbelief because of your lack of faith. And he goes on to make a graphic illustration, a vivid illustration, that ought to be in the frontless of our minds today. He said, if you but had the faith of a grain of a mustard seed, the mustard seed is the smallest seed in Palestine. I got a chance to see the mustard seed while I was there uh, for a few days earlier this year. The mustard seed is small. And he didn't even say the mustard seed. He said the grain of a mustard seed. If you just have a teeny little bit of faith, you can move a mountain. You can say to that mountain, uh, move from here or uh, move to there. Just have the faith of a mustard seed. And you and I can possess mountain moving faith. Jesus said to move these mountains in your life. You don't need no dynamite to get rid of that mountain. You don't need no bulldozer to move that mountain. You don't need no excavation crew. You don't have to have an earthquake, a volcano to erupt. Just have the faith of a mustard seed. Jesus declared you can move mountains in your life. Yes, faith make things change. But Jesus said, but this kind of faith does not come unless you have prayer and fasting. Now, it's ironic, beloved. He uses the mountain as his metaphor and the allegory as a substance or object to move in the life of the believer. And the reason he used a mountain for if you ever been to ancient Palestine, if you ever been to the Middle East, if you ever been to Israel and Jerusalem, you would take note quick, fast, and a hurry how the terrain has so many mountains, hills, and slopes. While there, I observed a mountain called Ararat. That's where the ark landed after the flood. I observed a mountain called Moriah. That's why Abraham uh, declared Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. I saw a mountain called Sinai while there. That's where Moses received the law. That, I saw a mountain called Pisgah. That's where Mo, God showed Moses the promised land. I saw a mountain called Nebo. That's where God buried the moraines of Moses in a secret grave. I saw a mountain while there called Carmel. That's where Elijah called fire down from heaven. I saw a mountain called Zion while there. That's where David found out that God is a stronghold even in your time of trouble I saw a mountain called the Mount of Olives that's where Jesus prayed one night to sweat ran down like drug there's a mountain there I saw called Mount Hermon the mount called Transfiguration that's the mountain in this text where Moses and Elijah appeared with Jesus oh yes don't forget the mountain called Calvary that's where Jesus died for your sins and mine he died on a mountain so you can move your mountain. Yeah, but you got to have mountain moving faith. I see some of y'all, just like me, you're about to get happy even in your living room. Preach, Brother Leonard. 
Y'all get it? Somebody say, I got it. See, what God wants to do is provide the tools we need and have them at our disposal that we can conquer the mountains in our life. Of course, Jesus is speaking literally, but more profoundly, he's speaking figuratively about mountains in your life and mind that can be moved by faith. You see, beloved, the Christian is pregnant with possibilities to move those obstacles in life. Yes, life has and will always have obstacles. Life has hurdles. Life has potholes. Life will keep your back against the wall. Yeah, there's all kind of mountains you will encounter in life. There's physical mountains. There's spiritual mountains. Below, there's financial mountains. Somebody don't say amen when I get, drive down your street. There's family mountains. There's job mountains. There's marriage mountains. There's employer mountains. There's health mountains. There's church mountains mountains we've been reminded later lately there's racial mountains yes a mountain is anything in your way that you can't climb too high to climb too wide to go around god said quit trying to climb what i'm trying to move i spent too much time in my life beloved go ahead and preach brother leonard trying to climb mountains that god is trying to move I spent too much time, energy, and money trying to scale stuff, climb stuff, that God is saying, no, you ain't got to climb that mountain. Use your faith in me, God, saying, I move that mountain. Oh, yeah, I found out in life, beloved. Maybe you found that out. Sometimes we're trying to nurture things that God is trying to negate. Sometimes we're trying to love what God wants you to hate. Sometimes we're trying to resuscitate things that God is trying to kill. And sometimes we're trying to climb mountains that God is trying to move. And so in the leisure of your praying ground, read again, beloved, the exhaustion of Matthew, the 17th chapter. When you get to the 14th verse, you see the incident. Jesus uh, descends off of Mount Transfiguration, off of Mount Hermon. He gets down to the base of the mountain. And since they're at the base of an enormous mountain, that's why he used the mountain. All of them could look and see the mountain. He said, with the faith of a mustard seed, you can move this mountain. You can say to this mountain, move from here to there. You see, this man at first brought his son to the disciples. And sometimes we spend too much time trying to deal with people who can't help us. People who came move who have no power or authority to make a difference. That's why when you're on the phone or you're in the establishment, uh, uh, can you get the supervisor? Can you get the owner? See, you there arguing with the waiter. You you need to find out who's in charge around. You go to the bank arguing with your money with the teller. They ain't got no power. You need to take your problems to a person that's got authority and power to do something about it. And when they tell you no, then it's no. I never accept no from people who ain't got no power. I wish I had a church in here today. So, so they take, he takes his son. The Bible says he's a demoniac. He's possessed by demons. He's, he's vexed. The man's son is jumping in and out of fire, in and out of water. He's foaming at the mouth. He's obviously got some mental, emotional, psychological, spiritual maladies. He brought the boy at first to the disciples. They could not cure the boy. He then finds and takes the boy to Jesus. Jesus rebukes and casts out that demon and devil and cured the boy that he returned to normalcy. The disciples go to Jesus in private. Hey, why couldn't we cast out that demon? Why couldn't we perform an ecstasy on that young boy? Jesus said, because of your unbelief. He said, if you had but the faith of a grain of a mustard seed. Notice the contrast. They're standing beside a mountain. They're at the bottom of this enormous mountain. He then says, your faith needs to be as small as a grain of a mustard seed. 
Again, a mustard seed is the smallest seed in Palestine. He contrasts the smallest level of faith against the enormity of a mountain. If you had a 290 bit of faith, a sliver of faith, you can move this mountain from here to there. And Jesus said, all things are possible if your faith and trust in God is sufficient. Beloved, we need mountain moving faith because I'm sure you agree with me today. All of us got mountains in our lives. We love to move, even need to move even on this morning. Lest I be too indelibly long, uh, let me drop three quick alliterations that shall register at the bottom of your screen. In this situation, there are three important things Jesus relates to the disciples and the multitudes and the masses. In all situations regarding moving obstacles and mountains in your life, you need the power, you need to know your possibilities, and you need to know what to practice. Power, possibilities, and practice. What do you mean by that? You see, to move something heavy, to move something gargantuan or enormous, uh, to move something colossal, you need some power. <laughs> now, he's not talking about physical power. He's talking about spiritual power. See, you heard of white power. You heard of black power. You heard of red power. You heard of green power. You, you heard of horse power. You've heard of man power. You've heard of atomic power. You've heard of steam power. You've heard of nuclear power. You heard of solar power. You heard of wind power. You heard of lunar power. The text talks about demonic power, and you've read about angelic power. But there's another power called all power, and God's got all power in his hand. Folks, you're trying to do things too big for you, but they're not too big for God. You need power to move a mountain. You need uh, wonder-working power. <laughs> you need supernatural power. That's why the Bible teaches your faith in God is what will move your mountains. You can't do it. I can't do it. Southside, we don't have enough power to do it. We don't have enough money to go to Washington and influence President Trump or the legislature or the Senate. We can't even move the governor in Florida. But we got the power of God, and God got all power in his hand. God can see the invisible. God can reach the unreachable. God can obtain the unattainable. God can move the unmovable. God can achieve the incredible. He can create the spectacular. He can do the unthinkable. God can bear the unbearable. He can conceive the inconceivable. He can complete the improbable. He can do the impossible. And he can move mountains in your life and mine. You ought to give God some praise. If you knew the power we have in Christ and in God through faith, the reason why God is not moving mountains because you don't have enough faith to believe he can. That's why he said to his disciples, Jesus did, why, why can't we move? Jesus? Because of your unbelief. You lack faith. You don't need a lot of faith. You ain't got to have a church full, house full, city full, nation full. Where faith of a mustard seed. Small seed, move this mountain. Yes, you need to know the power that's in and at our disposal to move mountains. Uh, I did a little research this week because the metaphor is very striking about mountains, and that's one of my fascinations in life. And I started looking at some of the tallest mountains in the world. You know what I found, beloved? Just about every mountain is named after a person. Isn't that ironic? So when Jesus said, move mountains, most of the time in our life, your life and mine, it's a person. That, that mountain got a name on it. It's a, it's a man, a woman, a boy, a girl. That mountain ain't a car. It ain't a TV. That, that, uh, cancer is a mountain. Uh, 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 a job loss is a mountain. Uh, people, family, friends can be mountains. Enemies 
a mountain. Uh, Mount Everest, named after Sir uh, uh, Everest, in the Himalayas range near China and Nepal, tallest mountain in the world, 29,000 feet tall. Uh, Jesus said, through faith, you can move that mountain. Mount Kilimanjaro, second tallest mountain in the world, on the border of India and Nepal, 28,169 feet. Jesus said, you can move that mountain. Mount K2, on the border of Pakistan and Nepal, 28,250 feet. Jesus said, with faith, you can move that mountain. Mount Rainier, right here in the United States of North America, right outside Seattle, Washington. I've seen that one. It's 14,417 feet. Jesus said, with faith, you can move that mountain. Mount McKinley in Alaska, 20,000 feet. 310 feet. Jesus said, with faith, you can move that mountain. The Smoky Mountains, that conglomeration in, in Tennessee and on the border of Tennessee and North Carolina. Jesus said, with faith, you can move those Smoky Mountains. Stone Mountain in Atlanta, Georgia, 1,600 feet tall. Jesus said, with faith, you can move that mountain. Lookout Mountain in Tennessee, 1,800 feet. 50 feet tall. Jesus said, with faith, you can move that mountain. I've come by to tell you, most of our mountains got a name on them. It's a person's name. And Jesus said, if we had the faith of a mustard seed, we can move and alter the mountains and obstacles and hurdles in our life. But you got to have power of God through faith in Jesus. See, faith how many times have we talked about it? Hebrews 11 and 1 describes it perfectly. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, beloved, but the evidence of things not seen. Are y'all listening to me? Are y'all feeling me? Are you able to glue it? Are you, are, are you attached to the message? Say amen when you can. Faith is the substance of things we hope for, but not evidenced by what you see. How many times, Brother Linda, share with you? If you see it before you see it, you'll never see it. What is faith? If you don't see where you're going before you get where you're going, when you get where you're going, you won't know what you are. What is faith? If what you see is all you see, then you're not seeing what God wants you to see. What is faith, Brother Linda? Faith is not jumping to conclusions. Faith is coming to the conclusion to jump. What is faith, Brother Leonard? Faith does not change what you see. Faith changes how you process what you see. Okay, I still, every now and then, y'all heard it, but there's a lot of folk out there who hadn't heard Brother Leonard's definition of faith. I developed it many years ago. What is faith, Brother Leonard? Faith is believing something is so, even when it does not appear to be so, in order that it might become so, Simply because God said so. That, that's what faith is. So now how am I going to move the mountains in my life? How are you going to move the obstacles and mountains in your life? Number one, you got to have power. And the power comes through faith in God. And then look at the text. Nothing is impossible. He said it. Read it again. With God, all things are possible. Nothing in your life can't be moved with God's help. He said, all things are possible. And that lines up perfectly with the great apostolos of old, a.k.a. the apostle Paul, and he writes to the church and saints at Philippi. In Philippians 4.13, Paul declares, I can do all things. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is off the table. Nothing is outside the boundaries of the power of God. Paul said, I can do all things. How? Through Christ, who gives me strength. Beloved, we need power. We get it. We tap into it. We access that power through faith in God. We need to realize the possibilities are limitless. Don't walk by. That's too much. That's too big. It's too big for you, but it's not too big for God. That's why David said in the Psalms, Lord, lead me to that rock that's higher than I. I know how limited I am. I find out preaching and pastoring for 36 years, I am very limited in what I can do with and to and about people. But every time I turn it over to God and I allow him 
to do what only he can do, the possibilities are enormous. E even the existence of Southside, where we are, 21 years after this congregation started in a clubhouse on John Yard Parkway with eight precious souls. And look where we are today. You can't tell me. <laughs> Ain't nothing impossible with God. So you need to know the power of God. You need to realize there's limited possibility, unlimited possibility with God. But now how do you do this? What practice did God give through Jesus to move those mountains, to move those hurdles, to move those obstacles? Remember, he's talking about mostly figuratively, those mountains in your life. They need to be moved. Quit trying to climb what he's trying to move. Matter of fact, you're going to be on there climbing when he's moving. You're going to get hurt in the move. If you'd have kept your little self down there and let him move it, no, you're all up there on the mountain. So he moved Ray Ray and Pookie and little pistol starter. You, it's like calling the police on him, and when the police get there, you jump on the police. You all on top of the mountain that God's trying to move. Get out the way. I heard my favorite song many years ago before I met Jesus. Move, get out the way, get out the way. Let God be God. You know how you do that, beloved? You know what? Practice. We need power. We need to realize unlimited possibilities. But he says this kind. What, what do you need to do, beloved? This kind. What kind? This kind of faith. This kind of uh, power. This kind of unlimited possibility. This kind comes with prayer and fasting. I, I, I don't know why in some circles people are against fasting and prayer. It's taught in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, endorsed by Jesus himself in the New Testament. Fasting and prayer. You read it? He said, if you want mountain-moving faith, you need to be fasting and praying. He didn't say pray real fast. He said fast and pray. You see, beloved, fasting is when you deprive yourself by definition of essential food or drink. That's fasting. That's why, that's why in the morning, when you wake up, theoretically, uh, we, we use a word called breakfast. You know where the word breakfast comes from? That means all night long you've been asleep, so you hadn't been eaten, so you break your fast. That's why we call it break fast, breakfast. Because when you eat in the morning, theoretically, you hadn't eaten, so you're breaking your fast. You hadn't had food for a while. And what Jesus is saying, turn down your plate, turn down your, your, your essentials, your nutrients, and use that time to focus. Every time you get hungry, it reminds you to focus that issue to God. And he's saying mountain-moving faith comes with fasting and praying. Yes, beloved, we need the power of God to move mountains. That only comes through faith in Jesus and God. You need to realize, it's right there in the text, the unlimited possibilities that come with power and faith in God. And you can do all things through Christ. And then you need to join me and all of us as we practice what he gave us, fasting and prayer, to unlock the power, the faith, and the unlimited possibilities. Not only we fast, but we pray. It ought to be a hallmark of every child of God's relationship. God talks to us through the Bible. We talk to God through prayer. Every time something substantial and significant happened in the Bible, it was preceded by prayer. Hannah wanted a son. She prayed. Israel was at the Red Sea. Moses prayed. Israel was at the walls of Jericho. Joshua prayed. When Daniel was in the lion's den, Daniel prayed. When the three Hebrew boys was in the fiery furnace, they prayed. When Peter, before he walked on the water, he prayed. When Jesus took two fish and five hutch puppies and prepared to feed 5,000 men, he lifted it up to God and prayed. When Jesus was in the garden right before he went to the cross, the move, not only mountains, but the move, the sins of the world, he was in the garden and he prayed. Oh yes, we need the power of God through faith. We need to realize the unlimited possibilities of God, and we need to practice fasting and prayer. And then, and only then, can we move mountains in our lives. 
So let it be written, so let it be done. The grass withers, the flower fadeth away, but the words of our God shall stand forever. Let us pray together, beloved. Father, we're mindful, thankful, glad, happy for this rich word we find in your book called the Bible. We pray now we'll possess mountain-moving faith that we will recognize your power through our faith in your son Jesus. Father, we will not be limited, but we'll realize the unlimited possibilities uh, through uh, your son the Jesus the Christ. And we pray that we will practice fasting and prayer that will strengthen our resolve that mountains, situations, circumstances, and issues, and even people in our lives can be moved through our faith and confidence in your son. Now bless us, Lord, as we prepare to partake of your body. The bread, the unleavened bread, represents your body. The fruit of the vine that represents your blood. I pray we'll take it with a clean hand and a pure heart. And then, Father, as we prepare to give, uh, our tithes and offerings. If we prepare to give the first fruit of our increase, we pray, Lord, that you would take it and bless it and be used to the glory of your kingdom. This is in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Those of you who are not affiliated and don't have a church home and not a member of the blood-bought, heaven-bound, Christ-centered, hell-proof church uh, that you read about in the Bible, we, we believe it to be the church of Christ. Uh, those who are interested in this ministry, you just like what you hear and what you see. But you heretofore have not uh, been baptized in water for the remission of sin. Come, come now, call us. Contact me. There's information galore on our website, our constant contact, our Facebook, and beyond. Uh, we want to invite you. How, well, how do you come? It's so simple that a fool need not err. Hear the gospel, the good news of the death, burial, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Believe it with all of your heart. Repent of your sins. Those steps are on the screen, even as I speak. Repent or turn from your ways of sin, degradation, and iniquity. And then, beloved, confess. Be verbal and audible. And declare that I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Join him in baptism. A submersion in water that washes away your sins and gives you access to the kingdom of heaven. Father, uh, beloved, if you can do those things, let us know if you're interested in a further study. And if it's your desire to be baptized, we will seek and find a way to do it safely, soundly, that you can have interest into the body of Christ. You can't join the church. It's, 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 it's not a country club. You can't join this is not a fraternity or sorority. You can't pledge. Uh, uh, this is not a business or corporation. You can't buy your way in. You have to obey the gospel and be baptized into the body of Christ. But look, let's commune as we're commanded upon the first day of the week. I have in my possession a piece of unliving bread. Prayerfully by now you have secured your communion packet or have purchased uh, some some unleavened bread and fruit of the vine, uh, a vine from your ethnic owl at your local grocery store. Those of you who desire to commune, and people have even been by today, the they come by daily and get communion packets. We have an abundance, anticipation of this quarantine. Uh, you need to have in your possession by this time a piece of unleavened bread. The Bible teaches this unleavened bread represents Christ's body. It's bitter. It has no yeast in the bread. He does not want this to be a pleasant taste in your mouth. It reminds you of the bitterness, the pain, the agony, and the suffering that Jesus went through. Reminiscent in the Old Testament when they had Passover. That bread too was unleavened. It reminded them of the 400 years of bitter captivity that they had in Egypt. So this bread is designed, as we memorialize his death, burial, and resurrection, it's designed to remember the horrific price he paid on Calvary for the sins of humanity. So now let us partake of this bread together. Now, beloved, the fruit of the vine, the juice, the wine, as it was in the Old Testament, is red. It reminds us of his blood. The bread, his body, the fruit of the vine reminds us of his blood that he shed and spilled that he may build this spiritual institution that bears his name. Let us partake of his body. 
and the cup. Jesus declared, do this in remembrance of me. Now, beloved, it's happy time, it's glad time, it's hallelujah time, it's joyful time. It's time for us to give and give abundantly, give graciously. I just, on Wednesday night, gone by. If you haven't watched it, go back into your YouTube archives or your Facebook archive, and we dealt with a subject, how well do you give? And it gives you all the scriptural ev evidence that you need to be a good, cheerful, bountiful giver. It is your responsibility and mine. We owe God. We're not just being, we owe God. That's why he talked about in the Old Testament tithes and offerings. The tithe is what you owe. The offering is what you give. Uh, you, you and I owe God for all of these blessings we so richly enjoy. I want you to consider from the depths of your heart how important it is to keep your commitment to be a cheerful, bountiful giver. Not only does it bless the kingdom, but it blesses you and I. I wish I could express to you. I, I shared with them on Wednesday, and I, I, I wrote my labor out on Wednesday. I paid my bills on Wednesday, wrote my money out. I was ready to go. Uh, I'm still Neanderthal, but for those of you who are up to date, listen, if you're ready to give and you'd rather mail it in, you're not an online giver, internet giver, uh, our PO box is on, at the bottom of your screen. You can see it. Uh, you can mail it in, uh, your check, your secured funds. We never recommend you mail cash in the mail. But you can mail in your secure funds from all over the country if you so desire. The best method, probably the swiftest and most secure, you see the our three giving opportunities online. By far, our most popular is the Giveify. It's safe, secure, and swift. You can keep track of your own giving. At the end of the year, you don't need a statement from us. If you desire one, we'll give it to you. But you can see exactly how much you're giving uh, to the church through Giveify. The same applies to Cash App. You know how that works. Uh, you, you can hit Cash App. Give, give on Cash App. We, it's our second most popular. It keeps track of what you're giving to anybody. It'll tell you what you gave to the church. It's safe, secure, and swift. And thirdly, we have PayPal for those who want to use PayPal. Safe, secure, and swift. Be generous. Uh, be happy about it the ability to give. And for those who just rather drop it off by the church, Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., myself and usually a couple of deacons are here to receive your lay-by. We pass out community supplies. We see to the superintendent of the building. We offer mobile prayer for those who desire. You can come by Monday through Friday. 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. If we're not here, we're gone, or you get here before we get here, there's an abundance of communion cups in the mailbox. If you just want to drop the label off, pass it under the door, secure it, make sure it's all the way under. We receive it and deposit it upon our arrival here. Beloved, continue to pray, love, and care one for another. Always remember and never forget, God loves you, and so does Southside and Brother Leonard. Join us on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. as we talk about spiritual wellness. We'll be talking about how well do you love. Beloved, let all of us work, endeavor, believe, and practice to the point that we have mountain-moving faith. God bless you. Great is he who's the king of kings. And the Lord of Lords, He is wonderful. Out of great is He, who's the King of Kings. And the Lord of Lords, He is wonderful. So pray and say, Great is He. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
Yeah. 